Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our everything you need to know about Selenium 4 version which is going to be something released in upcoming days and currently Selenium 4 is in Alpha 3 version. So we are already talking about Selenium 4 in our previous video and we discussed about the different feature sets and changes which are going to be coming for Selenium 4. And in this video we are going to be talking about the Chrome DevTools feature which was something released in Alpha 2 and in Alpha 3 it has been enhanced even further and we are going to be talking about this feature a lot in this particular video. Alright, so let's get started. So this is the same project that we are working in our earlier video and we are going to be making use of the same project and we are going to add some feature set for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably just copy the whole code or maybe cut this particular whole code and I'm going to create a new method here and I'm going to call this as private static void selenium for misc feature and I'm going to pass the chrome driver here as Chrome driver. I'm going to paste this particular piece of code. So this code is going to be completely isolated from the code that we are going to be discussing in this particular video. And today we are going to talk about the new feature which is available within the Chrome driver. So if I go to this particular Chrome driver as I told in our previous video, right now the Chrome driver has extended its parent to Chromium driver because earlier the Chrome driver was extending the remote web driver but right now it has extended to the Chromium driver and if you go to the Chromium driver you can see it extends the remote web driver class. So the Chromium driver as you can see in here has got many different new methods something like get dev tools. So this is the method which actually talks to the dev tool class and this gives us a lot of different functionalities that we are about to talk about in this particular video. So let's quickly jump into those different features which is provided by the DevTools option. So for doing that, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a variable for the Chrome DevTool. So I'm just going to call this as Chrome DevTools is equal to Chrome Driver dot get DevTool. So this gives me all the different methods for working with the Chrome DevTool. And the next thing is I need to create a session of the Chrome DevTool so that I can actually work with. So the Chrome DevTools dot create sessions will actually create a session for me. And you can see there is another method available, something like create session if there is not one, which means it only creates a session if there is no other sessions enabled. But I'm going to use this particular method for now because I know this method works fine without any problem. The first code that I'm going to be writing this time is going to be to see if the network is offline and how my application actually performs an action. So in order for doing that, I'm going to write a method here because we are going to be talking about many different things in this particular video. So it's better to create a methods here and I'm going to call this as enable network offline and then I'm going to call this as dev tools of this dev tool and chrome driver of the chrome driver and in here i'm going to call the dev tools dot and there is a method called a send method so within this send method you can actually pass the command to the chrome dev tool which is nothing but in our case we are going to pass the network and i'm going to say i need to enable the network and you can see that I'm going to set the maximum total buffer size as 1 million and then I'm going to set the maximum resource buffer size and the maximum post size to maybe empty or optional of empty. So for doing that I'm going to say optional of and I'm going to say optional of empty and optional of empty in here and then I need to emulate the network condition here such that the network is actually offline. So for doing that, I'm just going to say devtools.send emulate network condition. So this is a static method. I can probably do something like this conditions 
and you can see that it asked me to import this particular element so I'm just going to import that and over here I can set the offline of the boolean latency download throughput and upload throughput and then the connection types so which I'm gonna probably do something like this and then just to see what's really happening within the Chrome browser and in order to get that particular response within my IntelliJ IDE, I'm going to add a listener here. So you can see there is something called as listener. So this will return as the event which is actually happening. So I'm going to say network dot loading failed and I'm going to say loading failed of assert. I'm going to do an assertion here. So I'm going to say assert equals I'm going to say if loading fails dot get error text then probably it should be equivalent to net of error internet disconnected which is going to be this one and I'm going to import the assert equals as an static method and now if I try to do a chrome driver dot get of the execute automation website then probably I'm going to get the offline error or maybe the page is not going to be completely loaded as well so i'm just going to save this particular piece of code and then i'm going to call the enable network offline code so let's execute this particular piece of code and see what's really happening so you can see that the browser has been opened right now And you can see that the network has gone offline right now even I have the internet connectivity right now and it says that the network is offline so this I could able to achieve using the Chrome dev tools which is available within the chromium driver so this is really really awesome and I could able to do the exact same operation that I could able to do with other tools like Cypress and puppeteer so let's discuss about the other features which is available within the Chrome dev tool so for instance if within my exit automation website so if I try to go there oops because the session is already offline so let's say if I want to open the amazon.in website you can see that there are so many JPEG images and so many PNG images available within this particular page so what if I want to intercept this particular page and remove all the CSS stylings and the JPEG file or the PNG file then we can see how the page or the application is going to basically look like so for doing that all I'm going to do is I'm going to write one more method where I'm going to intercept the network and I will see how the application actually behaves during the particular piece of point of time so this is the piece of code that I'm going to be writing in here as you can see I'm going to do exact send method where I'm going to do a network.enable and I'm going to pass all these methods as optional this time because I don't want to create any latency there and then I'm going to set a blocking URL for the immutable list of all the CSS files and all the JPEG files so that I can probably block only these images within my page that I'm passing in and then I'm going to do a listener and I'm going to verify what kind of images are being blocked and how it is behaving so that I can see the response coming out of it and now if I want to see how this particular code is basically going to work I'm going to comment the existing code from here and then I'm going to call the intercept network and I'm going to pass the chrome dev tool and now I need to call the page as well so for doing that I'm going to do a chrome driver dot get and this time I'm going to pass the HTTPS Amazon dot in website and we can probably remove this guy because this is the confusion uh, happening while it opens a page for me I've saved it and now if I try to run this particular piece of code You can see that it is opening the amazon.in website and you can see that the page is kind of very much scrambled the reason being all the jpeg images and all the css files has been completely blocked only some of the images are actually coming and this is happening because we have actually intercepted the network and you can see that we are not even allowing any one of the jpeg images so what if i just allow the css style sheet so i'm just gonna remove this guy i'm gonna save it and now if I try to execute this piece of code
you can see that now the styling has been applied but the images are still not being loaded so this is how we can actually intercept the network using the chrome dev tools available within selenium 4 and play around with it and verify how the application actually behaves during certain circumstances next up we can verify and see what if we could able to send the target with a page crash information and then we can see if the inspector of the chrome dev tool actually works without any problem so if i want to do that i'm going to write a method something like this in a detached mode and then i'm going to send the message to the target saying the page has been crashed so that it tells our application server that the page has been crashed so that the server sends another page and it reloads the client based on the request which has been sent so you can do all sort of jazz using this particular option and this inspect detached option is very very handy if you're gonna verify how your application actually behaves while the page actually crashes during the loading time i'm not really going to show you this demo but you can actually use this little piece of code to perform the test in your application and see how it actually works and the last option that i'm going to show just to wind up this particular video is going to be the console log output so if i want to see the console log output of the chrome dev tool i can do that as well and this is one of the dream for most of the tester to see what's really happening behind the scene within the browser and how to get the console log out from the chrome browser and verify how it actually works so in order to do that i'm going to write one more method in here something like this and then i'm going to send a message this time something like from execute automation just to mimic as if uh, I'm sending it from the server and then I need to once again send the console to be enabled for my session as if like how you do the console enabled within your browser and then you can add a listener to add the message and verify if the message has been added or is it equal to the message which that you have added because you don't know exactly what are the messages coming within the Azure Automation website. So we can probably add a listener and we can see if the message has been added. And if it is added, then it should get the text which is equal to the message that we have sent, which is nothing but the from Exude Automation. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing in here and I will see how it actually works. So I can probably call the Chrome driver as well in this case and we'll see how it actually works so i can just call the console log right now um, i'm gonna pass the chrome dev tool and the chrome driver so i will refactor this piece of code before checking into the github so as of now whatever code that you are seeing in here is going to be something like this as a method but while i check in within the github repo i'll just refactor it add more documentation and then i will check in so that you can have a more clear understanding of how this particular code is going to look like so now if I try to execute this particular piece of code, the code is probably going to show us an error message, at least in terms of the assertions uh, that I have passed in here. So probably just wait for the uh, execution to happen. And you can see that there is this particular failure. And it says that assertion has got failed because the expected is true, but actually the result was coming in as false because it couldn't be able to insert that particular message. I'm sure that this is happening because of the Excel Automation website has got some other problems with the, uh, with the jQuery, as you can see in here. So the remedy that I try to do as a quick one is going to be doing an HTTPS website, is to work with an HTTPS website which is nothing but the amazon.in website. And now if I try to execute the same piece of code, you should see that the code will be executed and the assertion should work fine without any problem. As you can see, the console got enabled and you can see that I get the console message like text from execute automation over here, which is pretty awesome. So this is how we can also get the message out from the Chrome DevTool and we can 
put a listener and we can see how the actual code is actually working or maybe get the text out from a Chrome Dev tool and verify if that's what we are actually expecting from our web application. So these kind of stuffs that we can do using the Chrome Dev tool option, which is available within Selenium 4 Alpha 3 version. There are less documentations available, at least in this particular point of time on the Chrome Dev tool, but in future, maybe there is going to be new documentations added on the Chrome Dev tool. So we'll have more information on that. And I'll probably add more and more videos on the same because this feature is more close to the other tools that I'm working with right now, something like Cypress and Puppeteer. So it's very, very easy for the testers who have already got or gained the knowledge on Puppeteer and Cypress so that they can easily work with this particular feature, which is available within Selenium as well. So that's it, guys. This is about Selenium 4 and the Chrome Dev Tool support added within the Selenium 4 Alpha version. I'll also add even further videos on the Chrome Dev Tools, how to work with inspectors, profilers, and validate profiles and stuff, which we'll be talking about in our upcoming videos. But I guess this video has given you a complete overview of what's going to be coming up next on the Chrome Dev Tools feature of Selenium. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.